Hello, everyone. Hi. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So um, today is my second live concert show at the uh, Design Day Marathon event. Um, I would like to extend my gratitude to our wonderful organizing team. And I'm very, very honored to have uh, all my guests and old friends to this event to share some wonderful pieces. Uh, I'm the host and a curator of this concert. So now we are going to start our live. This concert is called The Organized Sound. This is an electronic music concert in tribute to uh, Edgar Varas, the French composer and father of electronic music. So this concert features a wide range of electronic music composers and artists from all over the world, working in a very uh, big variety of forms and styles and using a wide range of technical approaches to manipulate sound. From the classic sound reconstruction techniques of 20th century electronic music composition to the interactive techniques favored by artists in recent years, all focusing on sound to explore new sounds and form weaving uh, different structure and concepts. Uh, currently, I am a assistant professor at China Conservatory of Music and China Academy of Art, and I usually uh, compose electronic music, computer music, and new media, and interactive sound installations. And also, I'm a curator, and uh, I'm super interested in uh, curating different works and arts from different uh, disciplines and cultures. So, I would like to introduce our guests of this concert. First, uh, Tai Hong Park from the NYU. Welcome. Hello. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, and we also have Jeff Kaiser from the University of Central Missouri. Welcome. Hey, thank you. So great to be here. Hi, everybody. And we also have uh, Mr. Daniel Taruki who is not being here because the time difference is really awkward uh, in the Europe. It's like the late night, early morning over there. And Daniel Turugi is the director of Inner GRM. And this is a very, very important sound research center in our uh, academia. And next, uh, Scott Dio from IUPUI. Hi, Scott. Hi, Maggie. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here tonight. Thank you. And we have Todor Todor from Belgium, and he's also an old friend of our uh, Music Acoustica Festival. Hi. Hi, Maggie. It's nice to be here. Uh, hello to everybody. And I confirm it's awkward time. It's like 4 a.m. here in Europe. <laughs> so I understand a little bit, Daniel, but I used to go a little bit. Yeah, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, and last but the least, we have Jeffrey Stollett from the University of Oregon. He's also a very old friend and close friend uh, with our Music Acoustica Festival. Welcome, Jeff. It's great to be here. I'm in Tokyo at the moment, and so it's a very comfortable time. And I had a wonderful breakfast and ready for some great music. Great. Look forward to Okay, uh, today we have six pieces and they are in different kinds and styles and with different technologies. So let's get started. Uh, wearing headphones is recommended for a better sound quality. So if you are ready, let's get started. First piece from Tai Hong Park.
Huh? Sorry, I was okay. I should share my screen. <laughs> okay. We had an intro by John Cage, so here's the actual piece. That's yeah, I saying. thought it was sort of uh, nuanced and uh, uh, very uh, subtle. <laughs> okay, uh, the first piece from the new Hi. silence. It's good. Can you hear? Can you hear me?
Okay, that was the piece from Taihon Park. And next is from Jeff Kaiser. Can you guys see the slides on, on the on the show? Okay, it's Jeff Kaiser, right? No? Um I probably got frozen on my screen. Okay. That's really weird. Um hold on. Okay, Jeff Kaiser. I'm 
Okay, the next piece is from Daniel Turugi.
All right, next piece from Scott Thiel.
Okay. Next piece from Jeffrey Stollett.
Okay. Next piece from Todor Todoros.
All right, congratulations. They are very fantastic and striking pieces, and we really enjoyed a lot. So um, now we have a very short panel discussion and Q&A. Uh, I really enjoyed the pieces, and also as I'm quite familiar with all of you, and I would like to ask a few questions. So for Tai Hong, uh, I know you've traveled to many continents and countries, and also you have a very strong uh, background in digital communications. So uh, would that be a really important foundation for your music technology composition? That's a great question. Um, I think that, especially in this piece, um, you can probably hear a lot of different influences, and not necessarily from the computer music world, and the electroacoustic music world, my influences from various different types of composers, musicians, Steve Reich from Stevie Wonder to Steve Reich and uh, folks that are in the more in the commercial pop music uh, um, world. And then the more Varesian and organized sound type, type techniques that's, that I sort of try to embed in the, in the piece. I think that all really plays into this idea that music is the language of humankind, right? So I think if you listen to that piece, you'll be able to sort of find little segments that sort of resonate with, with the listener. And uh, that, that is, as you say, sort of my own background where I was actually born in Austria, lived in Congo for two years, four years in Greece, uh, many years in Austria and many years in, in, in uh, Korea and Malaysia, and then the la my last stop, I think, is, is in the U.S., and I think that piece in particular reflects that idea that it is a multi-dimensional aspect, and common actually means masking, so whatever you, if there's an opportunity to hear it again, you'll probably see all these masked sounds in different layers, and, uh, and I think, um, as you say, yeah, it's a form of communicating in a way, and whether you hear those things or not is really not that important. <laughs> I think these are the composer sort of things that we think about, and uh, I hope that um, as people listen to it, they find something that they appreciate. And it's fun playing. So I, the entree asked me to play bass on it, so I had to put in some uh, bass uh, um, techniques in there, and it was fun to play. Right, yeah, I, I heard like you really touched different cultures in this piece. And also uh, I, I I took the idea, uh, the organized sound, because uh, even though this is not a very special year for uh, Morales, but still his concept, the organized sound really influenced so many like generations of composers and musicians. So this concert is actually like a palette of different kinds of organize, organized sounds. Um, in our audience, there are many students from other, uh, from other disciplines like art, technology, fashion and design, and uh, or physics, I don't know, many other disciplines. So um, probably they are very interested in develop in exploring the interdisciplinary works or um, experiments. So uh, we can share some suggestions to the students. So um, Jeff, I have a question for you. Um, when you are in improvising with a trumpet, <clears throat> your vocal, so how do you make decisions right away to control the controllers or to control the uh, programs on your computer. Uh, thank you for, uh, for that question. And thank you everybody for this wonderful, wonderful music uh, tonight. This has been super awesome. Um, so I like uh, Professor George Lewis, one of my heroes says that uh, improvisation is a ubiquity of everyday life, that we do it when we walk down the street, we do it when we're sitting at the dinner table eating, you know, we don't have a pre, well, maybe some people do, but most of us don't have like a pre-planned order. Like I'm going to eat a bite of rice now, some of my vegetables now. So we kind of like improvise through all of that. 
and I so I kind of like set up these environments that I explore the same way one might explore walking through a different environment or maybe eating a very strange meal in this case. Um, but, you know, also, you know, we're never alone when we're there. We've got all of our history. We've got our mm -hmm. instructors words in our brain you know we're thinking about our heroes we're, we're never alone when we're improvising um even in a solo thing and so it's like we bring all of these ideas and that that go into the decision making and it's it's a really great question it's a really hard one to answer and you know also carl berger of the creative music studio said improvisation is faster than the speed of thought hmm. and i think that you know that's that's kind of an interesting take. I'm not really thinking about it, but it's certainly happening and there's certain transitions going new places, different places. Um, so anyway, but thank you for that, uh, that interesting question, Maggie, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, well, I really liked the piece, you know, this is really different from the classic or, you know, different um, styles. And I, I hope, in in the future we can see the live on stage with you sometime thanks i mean and you know i come from i mean i come from punk rock and metal and so you know that's certainly present there so wonderful i couldn't tell <laughs> <laughs> well uh scott okay uh, I I think we all really liked the piece with the bicycle wheel. Yes, and it's really uh, visually engaging, and also it fit. You know, the the whole video was really awesome. And I know you are a percussionist, and also you are a composer. So when do you uh, when when you compose music with so many instruments or so many sounds uh, in our daily life? Because your, you know, as a percussionist, I think uh, you probably are much more uh, sensitive to sounds. Mm. So how do you work with other musicians with all the different kinds of sound and with the computer program? Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of like what Jeff said about when he was saying improvisation is faster than the speed of thought. And what I was thinking was, he was also suggesting there's an intuitiveness, you know, that you sort of go beyond what what has to be or what's conventional and you're searching for other things. And so uh, I, I love the process of working with people on sound. And you're right. It's a big deal for percussionists and, and it's a big deal for me. And I've always thought that percussion, um, you know, is sort of the acoustic brother of electronic noise, you know, it's the physical uh embodiment of of noise that you can make with your hands where electronics is is the the computer-based uh version of that or side of that and so combining them and so generally it's it's kind of a i mean it doesn't have to be a super long process but it's a process of of playing together a lot and and so and if it's a composer maybe if they're out of town then then we make arrangements to spend a couple of days together and, and here in the studio and i've spent years collecting uh, objects, you know, not so much percussion instruments. I have those, but, but, uh, and lots of metal, it seems like metal and electronics really like each other. And so in the bicycle wheel was, a, was a natural and it is a dramatic thing, um, you know, to play, it's really fun to play, but you can do some interesting, unique things with it. But, but I think it's a, a lot of sitting down and making sounds, recording them together with composer, um, uh, exploring ideas and, and sort of in my own, uh, my own imagination, uh, when I start working with an instrument or a break drum or a piece of metal or anything, I, I sort of pretend that there's this world, there's the universe of sounds that are locked up in that object that, that are dying to get out, you know, instead of, instead of just hitting it and you hear that sound, there's many, many other sounds and that the, the, the computer processes enable us to unlock those sounds and unleash them. And that's sort of a metaphor I use, uh, I work with uh, in this process. So thanks for that question. Thank you. Uh, I've been to your uh, home studio a few times and I was so uh, 
so surprised because you can see everything you can imagine and something you can never imagine. Anything could be instrument to you. So this is really wonderful. Um, as we saw another piece with the, the uh, sensors, like, <laughs> so um, Jeff, Jeffrey, you've been an expert in the interactive music, especially in the motion driven kind of uh, interactive music. So how do you think of your actions and the music? And how do you manipulate them together? Well, your mic is off. <laughs> uh, that's a very complicated question. So I'll, I'll do my best to address it in a basic way. Um, let me say that I guess uh, uh, music, um, like life, is event and action driven. And it's, it's meaningful when we can coordinate a musical, a physical action with a sonic outcome. And my pieces in some ways sort of articulate those cause and effect relationships, um, those being very clearly articulated and sometimes less clearly articulated and what meaning derives from um, those um, associations which come from a combination of both the visual and the sonic uh, perceptions. So um, it, it's a complex thing. In, in this particular piece, um, uh, there were, I, I sort of exploited things um, in that it's sometimes this happened accidentally and then over time they got they poured into the piece uh, to allow the visual domain to kind of um, uh, drip into and be an equal counterpoint to what we were hearing so it was having all of those elements uh, together um, uh, helped me sort of create this particular piece mm -hmm. yeah I find it's very fantastic because you sort of combined uh, music, dance, theater, and visuals all together into a piece. That's really wonderful. Well, this particular one had the Wacom in the flat dimension, and then mm -hmm. I used a, a camera with um, um, computer vision to kind of have a, a Wacom tablet that's working up and down this way, so I can I could play in one dimension this way and in another dimension this way and um, and move back and forth in sort of in counterpoint. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, we, we saw the last piece that was a really old visuals, but still you can feel the power from that piece in the music and in the visuals as well. So, uh, Tyler, that was your really early period of time. I'm sorry, but your sound kind of disappeared. Um, I, I really want to hear you answer that one, Toter. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, you kind of liquefied. <laughs> uh, Sorry, there was there was a transformation on your voice due to to problems in, in communication, and I couldn't hear the end of your sentence. Okay, so my question was, how do you uh, think of the relation between the visuals and the music? Hmm. I, I would say that actually I recognize myself in most of the things that have been said by by the people here, the composers here around me, and uh, it was a great concert. I, I want to 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 add that too, and actually um, I don't have like one method to associate images with sounds. I, I recognize myself a lot in improvisation. You know, in the musique concrète, there was this notion of séquence jeu where you played with acoustical uh, objects in uh, bodies, actually, in opposition to sound objects in front of microphones. And then you were 
going to work on those recordings. What I wanted to actually do uh, with what I did, that was a composition from 95, so it's quite old, but it was my beginning with uh, with Max FTS at that time on the Next Cube and, and the ASPW. And my idea was uh, there was granular synthesis at that time, but actually there was only one guy that did it live, uh, uh, and that was in Vancouver. Uh, but I wanted to have faders to be able to modify all the parameters live. So I would actually uh, either see the images or remember the image and actually make long uh, sequences where I would modify the parameters with faders. So I actually composed by improvisation uh, sounds and then I mixed and edited them. And uh, this is how I basically work uh, still now when I'm working, I, I worked a lot with a dance company. I'm, I'm here in Norway because of that. Um, is that I feel there's a freedom when you improvise. And like Jeff said, uh, it's faster than thinking. Actually, at some point, you're inside a project and you feel it, though you cannot really express it. And actually, your hands, when they can control something, not only in 2D with a mouse, but with a multiplicity of parameters, get to sculpt the sound much faster than if you have to draw to, to, to draw curves. So so basically uh, the link between the images and the sound for me is not rule based, is built based on the intuition of the meaning that the image have and how you can enrich that meaning by adding another layer uh, of a different medium. Mm. Wow, thank you so much. Um, I think I really, I think the, the whole concert is really engaging and I believe the audience will feel the same way. And uh, we may have some questions from the audience. And let's see. Okay, uh, we have a question. So this is a student from uh, technology major and uh, he can make some like computer programs so uh, if he wants to do like a piece with the music and uh, sensors so what is the very first step that he could do maybe Any know sense? what what kind of gesture he wants to sense to find the right sensor like where um, to start? I mean, the mouse is always a good one at the very beginning. Uh, mouses can do amazing things. Mices, Mises. Keyboard? <laughs> a good place to start. I wouldn't end there, of course, but uh, yeah. Right, because uh, we usually have some uh, equipments like MIDI controllers or some uh, professional like MIDI keyboards or something, but some of the students, they, they don't have them. But still, this kind of art is really intriguing. So that's another, why. Another place they can start with is some uh, USB game controllers. Those are very convenient. Uh, they're inexpensive. Uh, if you create a piece, you can probably buy two of them in case one of them breaks. It has a lot of the, that kind of redundancy helps the life of a piece. Um, and so there, there are a whole bunch of different ones from, um, well, even the wireless ones like the Wii, but also just the, some of the Sony ones. Um, I use something called the Game Track, um, which is um, pretty good for things that are physical. Um, there's just a lot of opportunities in, in that realm. Right. And if he's a student in technology, maybe Arduino. Uh, That's right, yeah. Arduino is wonderful, yeah. And I would add to that, um, oftentimes I think people want to look far away for things, but uh, in this day and age, we have a, uh, a device a mobile that has phone. 
many Definitely. many sensors already built in gyroscope a accelerometer if you have a macintosh type computer it has actually a I think it's a 3D accelerometer built in, which means that if you do this, it can sense what's happening. And I think it was built in so that it would shut off the hard drive back in the day. But you also have a camera, right? So there's there are things that are in front of you that you already have. And I would say start perhaps there. And then because those things you know how to use, right? So it's it's good to start where you have a, a level of comfort and then you explore further. And, and maybe one more thing is that I think at the end of the day, it comes to ideas that you have, right? What is the, what, what is it that you're trying to make? What are the musical ideas? And, and, and then you sort of realize it. And, and it is true if you have a interesting, different type of sensor, then new ideas do come, right? But at the same time, I think at the end of the day, I think it's like, uh, this old saying, uh, it's the music. <laughs> and there are these tools that make that happen for sure. And maybe we should add, it's the mapping. <laughs> because the final, how you- the Final frontier. <laughs> yeah, how you map uh, entrance, uh, the, the, the value of a sensor to, to a musical parameter can change everything. Yeah, and when Toder uh, says mapping is kind of like taking Jeff's great example of the mouse, right? When you do this, which is X and Y, two-dimensional change, how do you connect it to musical parameters? Right? It's a great question, and I don't know how you would do it, actually. It depends on what you have connected on the other side of the mouse, and then time, space, so verticality, and then, uh, and I would say, you know, try it out. There is no wrong way of doing things. There is no right way of doing things. Experiment, and then you'll get better and better and better the more you do it. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and rebouncing on that idea, actually, I can think of the first, uh, the first of the GRM tools, where actually you had just a simple bandpass filter, but they 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 mapped uh, the frequency horizontally and the resonance vertically, and then it became an instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can be just something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. I think this is really informative and very helpful to our students. And uh, at the end of this live show, I would like to thank every our guests for being here and sharing so many great pieces with us and shared all the ideas with uh, our audience. And also, I would like to thank our organizing team. And uh, that's all for today's concert. And other live shows will start in a few minutes. So uh, stay tuned. And thanks for watching. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.